Guys, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game releases very shortly. And with that, I wanted to basically break down the way the progression system will work for each character. You know, how they unlock their abilities, their perks, their attributes, grandpa abilities, how you level up your player, how you level up your character. I want you to know everything about the game before you get it so that you're ready to go on August 18th when the game releases. So let's break it down using this helpful article that the devs over at Texas Chainsaw Massacre released. And the thing that you need to learn immediately is that each character will have a special ability, they will have perks and they'll have attributes. And we actually know all of the uh, special abilities for each character. So for the victims or the, the survivors, there are Connie's focused ability, there's Sunny's heightened sense, there's Julie's ultimate escape, there's Leyland's lifesaver, and then there's Anna's pain is nothing. If you wanna see any of those abilities, feel free to pause along the way. For the family members or the killers in the game, uh, the cook has seek, Sissy has bane, the hitchhiker has trap, Johnny has hunt, and Leatherface has me. And I'm sure you've seen some of these abilities already from the technical test in May. Now, one of the things that we didn't see from the technical test in May were the different perks. Well, every character had perks uh, basically equipped, but we didn't get to choose them. In the regular game, you'll be able to choose your perks as well as attributes as well, which level up the character individually. Each character will have the ability to have five completely customizable loadouts. So if you want to run a, a specific build on one character, but something very different on the same character later on, then you can basically build these different loadouts, save them to one of the five customizable loadout slots, and then switch between them nice and easily. The abilities in game are what make each character unique. And as I showed before, each ability makes the character slightly different from the others. For example, uh, Connie has the focus ability, which allows her to unlock things very quickly. Leyland can knock over the family members, and that's what makes the characters unique from each other. These abilities can actually be leveled up along the way using the ability unlock tree, and I'll show you that a little bit later. There's also grandpa abilities, which isn't something that we really got to look at in the technical test. These are only available to the family members, and what these do uh, is basically a couple of things. They could raise grandpa's power level, they can uh, pave the way for grandpa to unlock more abilities, making grandpa a stronger character for the family members, able to do more for the, the family, as well as potentially unlocking an ability that you have pre-selected in the character loadout screen. So this is gonna mean that for the family members, it's really important to coordinate feeding grandpa throughout the game, as well as maybe discussing what your different family grandpa abilities are going to be. So you're not doubling up on unnecessary ability. There are going to be three perk slots available for each character. And as you can see here in the loadout uh, example at the bottom of the screen, this is an example for Sissy, I believe. You've got the Bane ability, then you have three perks selected, and then you have a grandpa ability. For every character, you'll be able to select three perks max. And since there are five, character loadouts that you can switch between. That means that you can have up to 15 perks available to you at any given time to switch out before you get into game. There are a couple of examples of the perks here. For example, for the victims, you have a uh, rally leader. When you rally a team by helping other victims, you and your team will recover from being incapacitated faster. You have parting gift. When a victim escapes, all family members will be highlighted to the perk holder. You have bounce back better healing items you use are more effective, uh, effective. And then for the family members, you have unrelenting, which increases your endurance. You have tracker tagged, hitting a victim will highlight them for all family members. That's really useful. And uh, exterior alarms, when active, all critical doors and gates are highlighted if they're open. So those are just six examples of the different perks that will be available to you when the game releases. You'll be able to select perks in the skill tree as you level up your character and figure out which perks you want to run. Now, there's also attributes. Attributes are basically what make a character unique as well. So there's toughness, there's endurance, there's strength, there's proficiency, there's stealth. Um, and then for family members, there's savagery, blood harvesting, and endurance. And we actually know what each of those attributes do as well, thanks to this article here. So for toughness, basically makes it so that you can sustain more damage before becoming incapacitated. It also shortens the recovery time. Endurance um, makes it so that you have more stamina and your stamina regression is faster. Uh, strength makes it so that you can escape sneak attacks better, you can grapple uh, in close encounters better, bursting out of hiding spots, 
It also helps in certain interactions such as escaping restraints like the traps, uh, opening crawl spaces and turning off the generator. Proficiency allows you to pick locks easier. If you have low progression, you can still pick locks. It's just longer. Uh, we've seen that. For example, Connie can do it really quickly, whereas Sunny can't. By default, that's just base. And then stealth is the ability to perform actions silently, such as generating less noise. Um, it does not affect general stealth use in games, such as hiding from family members or staying in the shadows. It's just literally like how much noise you make by the looks of it. And then when it comes to the, the family members, they also have savagery, which basically how much damage they deal with melee attacks. You have harvesting, which is, I guess, how much blood you gain back from those attacks as well. And then endurance is basically melee strikes strain stamina. Oh yeah, that's right. So when you swing, your stamina bar goes down when you're running. So I guess it, it reduces how much that happens. So those are some of the attributes that you can unlock for each character. And basically, as you go through the, the skill tree, you will unlock attribute points, which you can then spend on a character to either really hone in on their strengths. For example, Connie is able to unlock things really quick. She has really high base proficiency, but she has really low stamina. So uh, you could either increase her proficiency to make her an unlocking machine even faster than normal, or you could basically help her weaknesses by buffing her stamina up and uh, making her a more rounded character. Now, when it comes to leveling up, there's two things you need to know about leveling up. You have a player level and you have a character level. So your player level unlocks with experience earned overall, whereas your character level ranks up through skill tree unlocks. So your player level, um, you can get experience by winning like a close encounter, for example, turning the generator on, escaping or dismantling traps, or healing your own teammates. And those are just some examples for the victims. And basically the idea is that if you are on the screen looking at your opponents, you can see what their player level is, as well as their character level. And it'll give you a good indication of where they're at with their progression. And maybe you can figure out which character on the, 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 the game is going to be more dangerous. Maybe you communicate that to your teammates and tell them, hey, we need to look out for that guy. Now, this is the interesting thing to me, the ability unlock tree. So as I said earlier, every character has their own unique ability. Um, this ability can be leveled up over time. And so basically each level through base from level one to level two to level three gives a new bonus to the ability. And those bonuses actually stack. So in this example here for Bane, blow clouds of poison in the path of a victim to block their paths or lace them with useful items. You can see at level one, it's increased the amount of time the victim is affected by the poison to 12 seconds. At level two, it's increased the amount of time a victim is affected by the poison to 13.5 seconds. And at level three, we don't quite get to see that one. They've hidden that from us. Now, when you go through this upgrade tree, you can only select nodes that are adjacent to the, the node that you've already selected. So if you decide to go down the left tree, then you only be able to select something on the left or the middle. So it means it's quite important that you consider all your options before selecting which uh, ability you want to unlock. But if you make a mistake, there is the ability to uh, respect, as you can see there, as an option. Now, the skill tree is completely different to the ability tree. Um, the skill tree basically allows each character to unlock their perks, their attributes, um, and actually each skill tree for each character will have its own unique layout, making each character feel a little bit different. To progress through the skill tree, you have to buy nodes, and uh, you buy nodes by unlocking, um, you get skill points basically by unlocking your overall player level. So the higher your player level, the more skill points you'll have to spend. Um, different nodes will actually cost different amounts of skill points as well. So you need to keep that in mind when you're spending your skill points that some nodes are more expensive, but you would hope that those nodes are more powerful, right? Spending skill points uh, increases the family or the victim's uh, character level. So that's how you know if someone's a high character level because they've spent more on their skill tree, meaning they have more options available to them. Um, and also, uh, occasionally there'll be paths in the uh, skill tree called branch paths. And basically, you'll have two options, right? And for example, one of those options might lead to toughness. One of those options might lead to endurance. And based on which option you choose, the other path will be disabled. So you have to choose if whether you want to have toughness or endurance, whether you want to have this, whether you want to have that. So it'll give you the ability to, um, I guess, create quite unique builds with the skill trees. And of course, if something goes wrong with your skill tree or you're just not happy with your loadout, you can respect as well. So you're not locked into that necessarily. And that is basically the overview 
of how progression works in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You have your special ability, which you can level up using the ability skill tree. Then you have perks and you have attributes, which are unlocked by uh, leveling up the skill tree, which uh, you have to spend skill points, which you've unlocked by leveling up your player level. Hopefully all of that makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. And I can't wait to show you more Texas Chainsaw Massacre when the game releases. Bye for now.